coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. They are so mysterious. People don't see them. This year with the huge influx, people aren't used to seeing this many turtles. Uh, we weren't used to seeing this many turtles. Anytime you see one, getting even a little bit close, your heart starts racing. <laughs> Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. Nobody knows anything about what the hell's going on with mountain lions out here. They don't. Mountain lions are out here, and that's all people know. They are so mysterious. People don't see them. They're like little cat yetis. Okay, take away that cat yeti thing. Brilliant. Cat safety is our, our most important priority. As the cat walks through here, he's gonna step here here, here, and it's too far a reach to go over there. So he's just gonna go right here and get caught in the snare. We've captured 25 adult and sub-adult mountain lions over the last 10 years. We've put GPS collars on, and then we've also caught four kittens. Yeah, he's plenty big. When a mountain lion is born, it'll stay with its mother and nurse for two months, and then stay with its mother for another year or so, learning to hunt. And then after about a year and a half to two years old, the mother will leave them. Then you have a sub-adult lion that has to find its own territory. The dispersing sub-adults that we've had, they've gone very long distances. We had one travel from the Davis Mountains almost to Big Bend National Park. The data from our collared adult mountain lions had an average of about 150 square miles for their home range, but we had up to a 400 square mile home range. Going in on a kill with a cat, present 
I mean, it's a little nerve-wracking. Um, you can't help but just feel the, feel the eyes on you. So yeah, when you're going in on those fresh kill sides, knowing that it's still there, that it stealthily took down this full-grown deer, um, and it's watching you just the same. Yeah, my folks, I think, are more freaked out than I am about anything. Um, but as they should be, as parents should be. <laughs> Using these collars can find out what they're eating and what they're doing out here. Mountain lions are unregulated in terms of their harvest in Texas. They can be trapped, they can be shot. There aren't any limits on the number that you can kill or your methods of take. With a sample size of 21 cats. Survival was about a 53% annual survival for the cats that we had collared. The biggest mystery to me is how this population continues to persist in the Davis Mountains. What is it? What's that mechanism that's keeping these animals um, still here, this population still around? Is it immigration from, you know, the south, from Mexico, Big Bend National Park? Is it immigration from the north? Is it isolated populations of high surviving females? Mountain lions symbolize mystery. They're mysterious, they're elusive, they're secretive, but they're amazing animals. This population in West Texas has remained here for centuries. Understanding how it's still here, making sure it continues to, be, to still be here, that's an important thing. This is the Packery Channel. It's in South Texas. Packery Channel divides Mustang Island on the north and North Padre Island on the south. It is a very important habitat for juvenile green turtles. My name is Dr. Donna Shaver and I'm Chief of the Division of Sea Turtle Science and Recovery at Padre Island National Seashore. And I'm also the Texas Coordinator of the Sea Turtle Stranding and Salvage Network. People oftentimes don't think about sea turtles being in our Texas waters. It's only been within about the last 20 years that our numbers have shot up. The green turtle was once commercially exploited in Texas. They were captured and they were butchered in canneries right here in Texas. The good news is, though, that the green turtle is rebounding in Texas, but we've got a moving target here, uh, greatly increasing numbers of green turtles being found uh, stranded in Texas each year. Oh, I hope we can find this turtle, Mac. Call said just a while south of the... Uh... Thank goodness somebody called it in. Dr. Shaver and marine biologist Mac Pervin are responsible for rescuing sea turtles on South Texas beaches, and they've been busier than ever. 
the Packery is of course like a great place for fishing and recreation. We'll get a lot of um, entangled turtles. These jetty rocks, they're perfect. They're covered in algae. The turtles like to eat the, the algae off of them. They'll get stuck in the, uh, in the sea rocks themselves. So that's the two main sources of strandings we're getting. Right in there. Get this done quick, the water's coming in. Be careful. Yeah, here it is. Did we get it in time? Is it alive? It's deceased, unfortunately. We've had record-breaking months of strandings since uh, May. Uh, May, June, July, August, we've broken every record. In a normal summer, though, it's generally a slower time for our green turtle strandings. This year, with the huge influx, people aren't used to seeing this many turtles. Uh, we weren't used to seeing this many turtles. So it's vital that Texans know that sea turtles are all threatened or endangered species. We had to embark on a very intense educational effort. It was all hands on deck, fire alarm. We had to get out here quickly to initiate efforts. We had to get together pamphlets, educational materials. We've been posting signage that lets people know not to you know, touch the turtles or harass them anyway. If you see any turtles in distress, give us a call. We sent down volunteers and park service representatives, and we talked to the public out here. If I could give this to you, if you see anything, please give us a call. We appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good morning. I come out in the morning or on the weekends and I walk up and down the Packery Channel jetty on the south side looking for stranded turtles. Now I'm finding more and more fishing line where it's been improperly disposed of. This all creates a hazard for our turtles. Sometimes I have to cut the line. In the past you would come down on low tide. You may see a few but you didn't see that many. This year you can look every 10 feet and you may see 10, 20 sea, green sea turtles. Any sea turtle that's on the beach generally has something wrong with it. So those ones are important to call us, collect, and bring over to rehabs. You got him? Okay, put him down. Rehab partners like the Texas State Aquarium and Corpus Christi, Texas, work with Dr. Shaver's team to make sure rescued turtles are healthy before they're released back into safe waters. This is the Texas State Aquarium's Wildlife Rescue Center uh, in Corpus Christi, Texas, and this is uh, one of the most robust centers in the state where we take in marine mammals, uh, sea turtles, and then shorebirds and raptors. So about a week ago, a large, we presume male, green sea turtle was found on Pider Island National Seashores. It had a significant amount of monofilament around its right front flipper. He's been here a week, and, uh, shown some improvement. He's got some fight to him, which is really good. I think prognosis is guarded, whether or not we'll be able to, to keep that flipper intact or if we'll have to amputate it. The good news is, uh, even with that flipper being amputated, that turtle will, will most likely still be a candidate for release. Typically on a release day, we get started about seven in the morning. Again, clear the turtle, we'll scan it, make sure it's the right turtle. We then transport it to wherever it's going in a conditioned vehicle. If it's in the winter, we kind of try to keep the vehicle the same temperature as the water so that the animal isn't shocked when we get to the location. Amy smiled. Okay. From there, it will be transferred to a, a boat. We go try to find a place that's nice and calm that has a lot of algae for the green sea turtles to eat. Once we find that location, we've got some kind of secret locations where that, that really works out well. We'll just release them from there. If somebody hasn't been to the Texas coast in 20 years, they're in for a treat because if you're patient and you watch, you're going to get to see green turtles swimming and being a green turtle. Enjoy the beautiful resource that we have of having a natural aquarium of green sea turtles swimming and enjoying our South Texas waters. They can do it safely. We can have a balance of people and turtles inhabiting this earth but it, it requires education and some careful actions with our citizens. There are more ways than ever to help Texas Parks and Wildlife protect the outdoors through the Conservation License Plate Program. 
More than $9 million has been generated from the sale of these plates, funding wildlife research and big game restoration, protecting native species and their habitats, studying fish populations to improve Texas fishing. How do you like that? Improving Texas state parks through reforestation and other projects. We got one. Yes, yes. Every plate on a car, truck, trailer, or motorcycle means more money to support wild things and wild places in Texas. This is a goose hunting story about two Laurens. Lauren Carley. I like to do different things. I like to do new things. A new hunter and a nature lover. <laughs> All right, guys. I've been down there. Do y'all want to see some grapes that actually grow wild here? Yeah. yeah? And Lauren Laborde, an avid hunter, Can you go? <gasps> a busy mom, and a nine to fiver, eager for the escape. Get out you know, away from the computer screen, stop picking up the phone, stop clicking the mouse. Both are here for a special women's only goose hunt. Setting their sights on a new outdoor experience. It's early December and amongst some coastal farmland, Local guide Nick Stillwell takes a peek at tomorrow's hunting spot. Uh, we're out here uh, south of Bay City. Looking good, a lot of snow geese. Anywhere from 10 to 12,000 birds been coming in here. Anytime you're hunting snow geese, you never know what they're gonna do. They're the smartest bird out here. So I'm always nervous hunting these birds. I'm ready to shoot some geese. It's four in the morning, and the ladies are a short <laughs> ride from the decoy spread. Yeah, if I can find that ridge, it's a little ridge, little sandbar. You put them into the wind, you kind of just give a little pop like that, and that wind will catch it and move it and all that good stuff. This is all new. This is all new to me. I, uh, I am actually kind of sick. Uh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous um, about everything that's going on. I don't really know what to expect. It's warm. I'm, I think I'm overdressed. <laughs> um, 66 degrees this morning is pretty, pretty warm. For Lauren Laborde, this time outdoors is a much needed break. A break from here. So I work for um, a gas company and I do contract compliance. What was going on with the schedule for the platform prep? It's tedious work. Um, it's, it's a lot of reading, a lot of emails. So they're still at the dock, they haven't, they haven't left. It's not as exciting as being out in the field and getting to go hunting or anything like that. <laughs> the excitement's picked up considerably on the home front with 15 month old Braylon. Hey, you hungry? You wanna eat or do you wanna help Dada? Dad is Todd. Both work full days, <laughs> so life is busy. Quick meals, nothing that takes a lot of time. We still have all of the geese from the shoot. We still haven't been able to actually cook them. We got them, so we were gonna make gumbo, but. So there's the geese back here. Braylon decides to interrupt every time we try. But Todd really wants to do like a goose gumbo. It's all about the roux. There you go. With such a full schedule, escapes to the outdoors are a priority. This is because we're an awesome team and I have the best husband in the entire world. Aww, thank you, honey. <laughs> that lets me go goose hunting and watches the baby and... <laughs> I don't think there's any other way that I can live life. You have to have that balance. When dawn breaks and you're laying flat on your back, you're looking up at the sky and you're hearing all the little critters. You know, it's, that's when you, I think the, the calmness comes in. 
keep real still when we're decoying birds. Uh, don't be fidgeting, wait for me to call the shot. I'll say take them. That's about it. Lay down. Wow, look at that. Y'all get ready. I am really hesitant. Um, I'm kind of slow to get up. I've never shot up to shoot. I've always been standing and hitting something that's going in a uniform pattern. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little hesitant. For Lauren Carley, We're going down this way. she's never hesitant okay. when it comes to helping kids at her day job. This is Lake Houston Wilderness Park. Let's slide! And uh, I'm the park naturalist here. I take care of all of the um, kids programs, weekend programs, nature center stuff. Hang on, guys. <laughs> I've always loved the woods. Ever since when I was a kid, I was running around the woods barefoot. Yep, there's a hill. Let's go. I love uh, bringing people, bringing kids especially, into the outdoors and getting them to feel passion for it as, as I do. If you chew on the leaves of this tree, it will make your mouth go numb. I can reach it. The nickname for this tree is Toothache Tree. Kind of weird, huh? Yeah. Muscadine grapes grow on here. I've tried them. I don't like them. They taste kind of funny. I, li I like the regular grapes that you buy at the store. <laughs> Lauren's Nature Center it's a milk snake. is where the hands-on or fingers-on learning really happens. I want you to do two fingers. Can I see your two fingers? I do a lot of education. That's cool. A lot of people that live in the cities, they, they think the outdoors are scary. <laughs> he slayed me. And this is a way of sort of bringing them out, showing them things, especially things that I have in the Nature Center, uh, that it's not, it's not scary. Everything out here isn't going to kill you. Red and black. Red and black. Friend of Jack. It's now mid-morning in Bay City. The wind has picked up, but geese are still coming in. It should get better as the day goes on. They'll start coming in here and getting thirsty after they feed. We'll see what happens. We got a single right here. Bonnie, right. here. For Texas Parks and Wildlife, this is a chance to get more ladies interested in hunting. I got together with a couple of friends and um, contacted uh, some outfitters to put together a hunt that's designed for women. I wanted for women to feel like they can give themselves permission to go outdoors. And so when they're able to do this, there's a confidence that's involved in this. Yes, who was that? Shut up. As for Lauren Carley, her confidence is getting better. Anytime you see one getting even a little bit close, your heart starts racing. <laughs> You're like, oh, please, please be in front of me. But I'm getting more comfortable as the day goes on. Nice shot. <laughs> Atta girl. They just kept coming pretty much all day. So it was, it was cool. There's really not that much out there for us ladies to, to get together. Um, so it was nice to have an opportunity to get together with other ladies who share the same interests or want to learn more. We shot 20 birds today. Yeah, pretty good for, for some ladies here. I think we did a good job. <laughs>